Good morning. How are you? Quiet? Tired? All right. Well, I want to take uh, just another moment and welcome our uh, guests and first-time visitors. We're glad you're here with us. Um, glad that you came to be a part of what's going on at the church. And so, if you have your Bible this morning, turn to Ecclesiastes 3. Uh, that's about halfway in your Bible. Uh, Ecclesiastes 3. I want to give you some background this morning uh, before we get into the Scripture. Uh, Ecclesiastes was uh, one of three books that King Solomon wrote. Um, the first book that he wrote uh, was Song of Solomon. Uh, he wrote that when he was young. And then he wrote um, Proverbs, the book of Proverbs, a uh, book of wisdom. He wrote that when he was uh, middle-aged, writing to his son who was young. And Ecclesiastes he wrote at the end of his life. And if you don't know about Solomon, Solomon was uh, a young man when he came in to uh, be king. And all he asked for was wisdom. And the Lord gave him wisdom. Uh, and he was the wisest man who ever walked. And so, uh, if I could get life advice from the wisest man who ever walked at the end of his life, I think I would listen, wouldn't you? Amen. And so this is what, um, this book is written by Solomon at the very end of his life. And, and I want to read uh, Ecclesiastes 3 and then we'll pray together. Um, he says, For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones, and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to seek, and a time to lose. A time to keep, and a time to cast away. A time to tear, and a time to sow. A time to keep silent. And a time to speak, a time to love, and a time to hate, a time for war, and a time for peace. Would you pray with me this morning? Uh, God, we come to you this morning. We're so thankful to be in this moment, God, and we pray that your Holy Spirit would just begin to guide our, our hearts, God, that you would begin to shape us. And, and God, I pray that this morning you would hide me behind the cross, God, I pray that you would... Uh, that you would speak through me and to somebody's heart this morning, to somebody's situation. And so, God, we, we need you in this moment. We need you to move. Father, we love you, and we thank you this morning for everything. And in Jesus' name, amen. Uh, I had planned this morning to uh, finish out uh, the topic of what does it mean to follow Jesus this morning, but this week as I was praying about what to talk about, the uh, Lord just led me in a different direction, so is it, is it alright with you all if I just go that way instead of what I had planned? Uh, and I want to start off, I don't know if you guys had realized this or not, but living in Kentucky, I don't know if there's anywhere else on earth like here, and this is what I mean, the weather here is weird. It's the weirdest place on earth as far as weather is concerned, in my opinion. And what I mean is like in normal places, in, in normal circumstances, they have what's called seasons, right? And so uh, what that looks like normally from uh, June to August, there's this time where it gets really warm and it's warmer in that time than it is the rest of the year. And it's called summer, that's what they call summer. And then 
in the winter time, they have what's called winter, and from uh, November to like February, it's colder than it normally is. Have you heard about this? Heard about winter, summer? And then in the middle of those, it's like average. And so from uh, March until May and September until October, it's like normal. But we don't have that here. We don't have that here. We have all four seasons every week. So on Monday it's really cold, and then on Tuesday it's nice, and then on Wednesday it's really hot, and then on Thursday it's nice, and then on Friday it's really cold again. And it's frustrating, right? Because you, you can't like put away your winter clothes because you're going to need them. And you can't put away your summer clothes because you're going to need them, right? <laughs> so normal places... They have seasons, but here we don't enjoy that luxury. We have everything at once. and You know, we get mad at weathermen, but the worst job on the planet would have to be a weatherman for Kentucky because you don't know what's going to happen. You don't know what next week is going to bring. Most people can say, well, it's going to be cold probably. Or it's going to be hot, but in Kentucky you just don't know. You just don't know because seasons change so fast. And, and I always heard growing up that if you didn't like the weather in Kentucky, you could just wait around a couple of days and you would get something different. And uh, so in Kentucky, the, the weather changes so fast, the seasons, uh, are, some of them, sometimes it's cold for a long time, but usually it, it keeps changing up. And, And that's how life is sometimes. Life is like Kentucky weather. It changes so fast. The seasons in your life can change fast. They're unpredictable. And when life's seasons are unpredictable, they're just as frustrating as Kentucky weather, right? Because today, this is reality, and then tomorrow... This is reality. Things change so quickly in life. And just like uh, weather, some seasons we really enjoy and some seasons in our life are really frustrating. Have you ever been in a frustrating season of life? A hard season of life? A season where you thought it was never going to end? I just wish this season of my life would be over. Maybe you are in a financial season, a hard financial season, and, and you just, you're just waiting for the season to be over with. Or maybe uh, you're in a season of singleness, and you're just waiting on Mr. and Mrs. Wright, and you don't want to be alone forever, and you just want your, you just want your season to be over with. We all have seasons in our life. But the thing about seasons is that seasons don't last. Seasons are meant to change. And so seasons come and seasons go, but seasons never stay forever. Seasons are not permanent. In your life. And so what I want you to know this morning is that your circumstances are not permanent. Your circumstances, the things that you're going through, the things that you're facing, they are not permanent. They are temporary. The seasons in your life, they may be hard or they may be great. You may be going through good times or you may be going through bad times. But seasons in our life do not last. And that's a good thing, right? Because I've had seasons of my life where I'm pretty sure I couldn't have took it one more day. And then I've also had seasons in my life when I said, I hope this never ends. I hope this season in my life. But seasons never end and... Some of you this morning, you may be in the best time of your life. You may be having, your, your, your finances may be good, and your relationships may be good, your family may be good, your job may be good, and I hope it is. 
I hope it is. That's what I want for you. But I want to let you know that that's not reality for everybody. And some of us in this room, we're going through the hardest season of our lives. Going through the hardest time in our lives. Stress is way up. Finances are way down. Our careers are rough, whatever it may be. I came to encourage you this morning. I want to encourage you that that season will not last. Because it's just a season. And as I thought about this week, if, uh, if you're going through that hard season, if you're going through that hard period in your life, if you're a born-again believer, if you are a follower of Jesus this morning, I just want to encourage you that your worst day here on earth is your worst day ever. That's your worst day ever. And so, when you get to the place in your life where it's as bad as it could possibly be, you can look up, and you can be encouraged because that's as bad as it'll ever be. If you can get through that season, if you can get through that hard part of your life, you have it whipped. Seasons don't last and if you're in a hard season if you're in a bad season this morning that's good news but seasons are a double-edged sword and and what I want to tell you this morning is that if you're in the best season of your life don't get too used to it because things can change don't build your life around it don't put your hope in it I'm not trying to be a Debbie Downer this morning, but what I do want you to realize is that that money, those possessions, they're not going to last. They're here today and gone tomorrow. Can I hear amen? (laughs) They are here today and they may be gone tomorrow. Don't put your hope in those things because in reality, diamonds are not forever. They are not forever. They are temporary. And at the very best we can do, success is a season in our life. It's a season. And so, everything you're working for today will be somebody else's one day. Everything that you work for so hard and everything you stress over paying for, that's going to somebody else's today not today tomorrow maybe today who knows and the things that you treasure so tightly the things that you love so much chances are one day they'll be in somebody's trash can seasons seasons so what I want you to take away today I'm not closing I'm just giving you the bottom line first. Whatever you're going through, whether you're in a good season of your life or whether you're in a bad season of your life, if you're in a time of plenty or if you're in a time of need, regardless of where you are, it's just a season. And so you may be in a season of depression. You may be in in a season of grief. You may be in a season of singleness. You may be in in a season of being in a job. You may be in a season of this or that. But I want you to realize that it's just a season. But even more than I want you to realize that, I want you to realize that your season has a reason. Your season has a reason, and here's my point this morning. You are where you are for a purpose. You are going through the things that you are going through right now on purpose. You're not there by accident, and you're not there by circumstances or by happenstance. You are there by divine design. And here's what I believe. God is sovereign. He's creator of heaven and earth. And he knows everything. 
He holds the world and the planets and everything in them in His hands. And He has a plan for your life. And He has a purpose for what you're going through. Your pain has purpose. I'm not telling you this morning that God is the cause of your pain. I'm not saying this morning that God has caused your pain. But He is going to leverage your pain. He is going to leverage this season of your life for a reason. So God doesn't initiate our pain. But God leverages our pain for a purpose. God has a reason for the season that you are currently in. So maybe in the last few months or years, you've lost somebody close to you. Maybe you've lost a parent or a grandparent. Maybe you have lost somebody uh, that was a dear friend. And you felt this unbearable pain, and this grief, and this hurt. God didn't cause that, but God wants to use it. God wants to leverage that pain that you're experiencing in this season of your life to help somebody in the next season of your life. The things that you are going through, you're going through on purpose because God has a plan on the other side of those things. God has something that He wants for you in this season. God wants you to learn something. God wants you to help somebody in this season. God wants to show you something. God wants to draw you closer to Himself, whatever it may be. God has a reason in this season of your life. So maybe, maybe this morning you're just miserable at your job. I know that probably doesn't apply to anybody, but let's just say, let's just say you're miserable at your job and you say, I hate going to work it might just be that God is teaching you to have joy despite your circumstances you may look at it as punishment you may look at it like God will you ever get me out of this but God may want to teach you something in the middle of that season maybe you're going uh, through a period of, uh, of just being alone. You're lonely. Maybe it is that God wants to teach you how to give your whole heart to Him before you give it to somebody else. Maybe you're going through a period where finances are tight. Now, you all, you all have never been there. I know that doesn't apply to you, but maybe things are tight at your house. You don't know how ends will meet. It might just be that God wants you to learn to trust Him with your finances. To learn to honor Him with the little before He blesses you with everything that He has in store. Or maybe you're on the flip side of that and, and maybe you're in a period where finances are no problem. You have blessings everywhere. Maybe... You have a financial abundance. It may be that God wants you to be the miracle that the family down the road has been praying for to make ends meet. God has a purpose for you. God has a reason for this season in your life. The thing about seasons are is that we don't always understand them. We don't know all the time why we are where we are. But what we do have to realize is that God has a reason for us being there. God has a purpose for us being there. You have to stay in this season until God moves you out. Whether that's good or bad or ugly. But whatever you're going through, whether it hurts or whether it doesn't, whether you feel like you're never going to get through it or if uh, you can't, you hope it never ends. God has a reason for you being there. And that should do two things for us this morning. 
it should help us realize that if God has brought us to a season in our life, He has us there for a reason. And so, if God brought us to that season, then He can bring us through that season. If God brought you to this place in your life, His grace can carry you through. There is no pain that's too deep, no season too difficult, and no circumstance is too hard that God's grace can't carry you through. God's grace can bring you through whatever season you're in this morning. If God brought you this far, He will not leave you where you are. He's not going to leave you in this season. Your season is only temporary. Next thing that it should do for us is that it makes us realize that we can get through anything if it's only for a season. If you realize that your circumstances are temporary, it should give you encouragement because you know that one day you'll be through it. One day it will be over with and you will get relief. In, on the worst day in your deepest and darkest hour you can take take hope you can look up because the bible says that weeping may endure for a night but joy comes in the morning weeping is for a season and joy is for a season but if you are in the night you can look up because joy is coming in the morning. Pain is temporary, but God's grace is eternal. God's grace can carry you through your circumstances. If you didn't realize that God had a purpose for you, you might feel like that God was punishing you. You might feel like that God had it out for you. You might feel like that God was trying to hurt you. But what you have to realize is that God is not trying to punish you for your past. But in reality, God wants to use your pain as a platform for your future. God wants to use the pain in your past and the pain in your present as a platform for your future. He wants to use this season of your life. And the question I have for you, are you learning the things that God wants you to learn in this season? Are you aware that God, I, I'm here for a reason, I'm here for a purpose, God, what do you want me to learn here? Why do you have me in this season? Why do you have me in this place? Why do, you, why do you have me here, God? Those are the questions that we ought to be asking. Those are the questions that we ought to be figuring out. But you won't always get an answer. You won't always know the purpose for your season until you come through it. If you're not looking for the reason for your season, you might just miss it. If you don't realize and if you're not looking for that reason, it may come right by you and you never realize it. I want to read to you Romans 5, 3 through 5. Um, it says, Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance and perseverance character and character hope and hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us and so what Paul was saying is that your pain was not sent to punish you your Pain was not designed to destroy you, but your pain was designed to produce something in you. It was designed 
you're going through something so that it will produce in you something you will need in the next season of your life. He wants, God wants to build us up. He wants to build character in us. And the way that he does that is through pain. We have to go through pain to produce character. He wants to produce something in you. He wants to produce in you what you'll need for the next season of your life. So here's what I want you to remember. You get a short message today. That's where everybody breaks out into. Never mind. There is a reason for your season. God has you where you are for a reason. But you're not going to be there forever. You're not going to be there forever. So if you're going through a hard season, it's temporary. It's short-lived. And you can get through it. You can get through it because God will help you through it. It's not punishment. He wants to produce something in you. Because He loves you. He loves you. And He wants the best for you. He wants to make the best version of you. And sometimes that means us going through pain. So this morning I want to tell you that God loves you so much. And as I thought about this this morning, there's not even in the human vocabulary that can describe God's love for you. Not even possible. And I thought if, if, if I could gather up the words to describe God's love for you, you probably wouldn't even believe it. It's so big, it's so crazy, it's so magnificent that, that you probably wouldn't even believe it. God's love, it transcends all your bad decisions. God's love, it goes beyond all the things that you've messed up. And in this moment, God loves you. You may have never realized that before. You may be going through life and you may be trying to make God love you, but in this moment, I want you to realize that God loves you more than you'll ever know. His love, it has no end. It never ends. And what God wants from you is not for you to follow rules, jump through hoops. God wants to be in a relationship with you. Amen. He wants to get on a first name basis with you. He wants you and He loves you today. And so this morning, if you need to make a decision to follow Jesus, I want to invite you. If you need to talk about anything, if you're going through a hard season in your life and you just need to pray about it, I want to invite you to come to this altar. I'd love to pray with you or pray for you. But uh, right now I want to pray for all of us. So God, we uh, come to you this morning. Lord, we're so thankful for who you are and what you've done for us. God, we thank you that in our weakness, God, you're made strong. That in our failures, you just look even better. God, we love you. And God, uh, I pray for the people in this house this morning, God. Some of us are going through uh, some of the hardest seasons of our life, God. There's people in this house and they're going through unbearable circumstances. And so God, I pray that you would send your Holy Spirit to minister to those people right now. God, would you give them the grace they need for their situation? And God, would you show them your love? God, would you make your love a reality in their life? Lord, we pray this morning that if there be anybody here, God, that doesn't know you, 
that doesn't know your love, that doesn't know your grace, that hasn't hasn't given their life to you, God, that they would do that today. Lord, we love you. Lord, we worship you in this house today. And it's through Jesus we pray. Amen.